Hey, what's up guys? John from JBR here. Today I'm back in the workshop with another one of my tech videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to accurately find true top dead center on a rotary engine using one of these trick little pieces of equipment from Extreme Rotaries. Knowing where TDC is on the engine and making sure the timing mark on your pulley is lined up correctly with it, I can't stress to you enough how important that is. It's relatively well known in the rotary world that the timing marks that Mazda stamped into the factory pulleys was all over the place. I've seen some that were out by as much as 20 degrees. So if you're building engines and using the factory timing marks without checking them, it's only going to be a matter of time before it bites you in the ass and ends up costing you an engine. And later on in this video, I'll show you a couple of examples of just how far out some of those factory pulleys are and how easy it is to get caught out if you're not paying close attention to it. Now, the main reason it's so important to have your pulley marked at exactly top dead center is because when you get the engine tuned, your tuner is going to use that mark on the pulley as his reference point for the timing curve that he programs into the ECU. Now, if that pulley isn't marked correctly from the start, the zero point that your tuner uses is going to be out, which in turn will mean all the timing values he puts into the ECU after that are going to be out as well. So, for example, if he programs 15 degrees of timing into the ECU, but the mark on the pulley is already out by 10 degrees, the actual timing on the engine would be at 25 degrees, and 25 degrees on a turbo rotary could mean the difference between the engine lasting forever or the engine lasting 10 minutes. So that's why it's super important that you get this right from the very beginning. Reason I know all about it is because I learned this lesson the hard way myself about 20 years ago. I built an engine, I put it in the car, I went to the dyno, I did I think three or four pulls on about 14 pounds boost and halfway through a pull it all turned to shit. Apex seals went uh, through the turbo and out the exhaust and that was an expensive stuff up but it did teach me a, a valuable lesson and ever since then I've made sure on every engine build that I've done the pulley gets checked uh, before the engine comes off the stand and I've never had to deal with that problem ever again. Another thing I probably should mention as well is most pulleys when they come from Mazda weren't actually marked at top dead center either. The series four or five turbo pulleys, the factory mark was at five degrees after top dead center. And on the FD engines, the mark was at 20 degrees after top dead center. So even if the Mazda marks were perfect and in the correct spot, they still don't have a mark for TDC, which is another reason why this tool is such a valuable little thing to keep in your toolbox. Okay, now to use this tool, you're going to need front plate with a stationary gear installed, the timing cover, an eccentric shaft, a um, couple of engine dowels and the TDC tool itself. The tool slots on like that and the dowels go in to line everything up. Then the crank goes in. Like so. And once the crank goes in, it gets locked in place. And where that's locked in place, that's actually top dead center. And you can't move. Once you've got the crank locked in, spin that around so we can all see. Once that's locked in place, you get your pulley. You can slide your pulley onto the shaft and then you can easily see where the mark is for TDC. Now, to mark the pulley, I like to use uh, like a spring-loaded center punch, make a little notch in the pulley itself, um, and then I'll mark that notch with some bright nail polish so the mark is easy to see when you put the timing light on it. If any of you blokes need to find nail polish, the best place I've found to get it is out of your missus's top drawer. <laughs> There's usually a heap of different colors to pick from. Um, and enough of them in there that she won't even know if any's missing. She will now though once she watches this video. <laughs> okay now, 
as I spoke about earlier, I've got a couple of pulleys here that I wanted to show you just to give you an idea of how fucked up some of these factory timing marks can be. Alright, moving around to the front of the engine, the pulley that I've got on here now is one that I would consider to be a relatively good example of uh, one that's been marked correctly by Mazda. You've got your two factory marks here. This factory mark is 5 degrees after top dead centre. This one here is 20 degrees after top dead centre, meaning we've got a 15 degree gap between the two. And looking where the pointer is, TDC is right about here. To mark it, I would um, use my centre punch like so, put that mark on there and then come back later, put the liquid paper or nail polish on it so it's easy to see with the timing light. And it's as simple as that. Now, as I spoke about earlier, I've got a couple of um, messed up pulleys that um, have come from Mazda. And I'll give you a, a demo on just how far out they are. The first one. We haven't moved the crankshaft. And if you look where this mark is, it's probably already... I would say close to 20 degrees before top dead center. Then, here's another one on the other end of the scale. That's probably closer around to um, 15 degrees after top dead center. So just between those two pulleys, there's around about 35 degrees difference. So something that you always need to keep an eye on and that is a good indicator on just how easy it would be to um, to lose an engine if you were relying on either of these two pulleys to set your timing off you're, you're going to be in strife and your engine's never going to be right thanks heaps guys for watching i really do appreciate all the support and i enjoy making these videos for you especially when i can be making videos of products from kick-ass companies that i love to work with like extreme rotaries I hope you all learned something from it, and with a bit of luck, um, this information saves at least one of you from a blow up further down the track. If you want to see more tech videos, subscribe to my YouTube channels. I've got plenty more videos planned for the upcoming weeks and months. If you've got any questions or you want to leave any feedback, please let me know in the comment section down below. See you all next time.